Leaving the old life behind, giving the new one a try, making the past as we go, trying a new way to grow. Hello, and welcome to How to Have a Better Life When You're Dead. A discussion between Mike Mirabal and Jürgen Siever, two out-of-body travelers who venture into regions you may encounter after you transition from physical life, what some call death. Some of these are the areas reported in near-death experiences. We say, have a better life, because life continues, and the moment you die to this world, you will find yourself in another reality. Between them, Mike and Jürgen have over 75 years OBE experiences to talk about. I hope you enjoy their conversation. We have to ask why so little time we still have to try. I remember you mentioned when you go into the near earth levels, the people don't look any different than they do here on earth. Is that your experience? Yeah. Um, so again, all I can report is my observations, okay? Mm. Um, I'm not one of these people that say it's this way or that way. Other people might have different interpretations of mm. things. Uh, certainly, our subjective experience in life in this reality influences yeah. what we experience over there. So, uh, like you said, collaboration is really helpful. Yeah. So, um yeah, I, I noticed by uh, the, the the type of people I meet, what kind of vibratory level I am on. If the people are very much the way they are here on this level, like where you get people of all ages, whether they are uh, slim or obese or whatever, you get all types, just like you right. do here, you know. And I feel that... For most people, nothing really changes unless their uh, their mind or their their inner life has changed. And people who are ignorant of um, of an afterlife or so, and they are so tied to their habits and their their current life, nothing changes. They carry on, and the world is the same. They follow their same the same old habits, you know. The environment may change. I went to a place which was similar, which was a city, uh, which was similar to London or Hamburg, you know, these sort of things. But it was quite different. But it was still very Earth-like. And the people seemed to accept that. And they don't ask many questions about, about the environment. They just accept it. But there don't seem to be many people who have aspirations to, to get out of it and get into a higher level be, simply because the concept doesn't exist for them. So they seem to be stuck there. And, right. and I think that's where your work comes in, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, so to answer your question about what they look like, I, I've seen them change right in front of my face. I think mm -hmm. you have too. Yeah. As uh, yeah. their awareness starts to rise. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yes. Sometimes just knowing that they've died yeah. uh, can change it. So I've, I've, I've taken someone that was an older person yeah. who looked frail and sick. And then I tell them that they've crossed over. I, I use the word died because that's probably a word that they understand. And, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I get them to the light. Now they look young. They look like mm. they're in their thirties. Mm, um, mm, mm. And uh, they might be naked sometimes, but mm. then as soon as they figure out that they've crossed over mm. uh, and maybe my presence, they clothe themselves, you know, there's suddenly clothes on them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, there's so many strange things that happen, but I think one of the, I remember in your book, you talked about as you go to the higher levels, people are more attractive. Yeah. And yeah. I've experienced that too. Yeah. You know, first of all, the settings are much nicer, yes. futuristic, yes. It, you know, 
it's like you've walked into the Ritz Carlton, everybody's beautiful. Yes, and then on the true. lower levels, people might hold on to their, you know, their lower frequency yes. selves, like if they had addiction. Um, you know, I posted some Halloween <laughs> for Halloween. I went and I posted some of my retrievals. And one of them you noted was I said that people really uh, a lot of times they don't care. You know, they're happy in their situation. Yeah. And that movie Nomadland, I mentioned that you had seen that. Yes, it's where right. The, yeah, where these people were homeless and they wanted mm. to stay homeless. They really didn't want to mm. go back into society because that was uncomfortable for them. They were kind mm. of happy where they were. And I, I remember on one occasion, there were a group of guys that I was talking to and they were all sitting on a bench and um, I interviewed them about this. Yeah. And they gave me all these stories about, well, you know, it's not so bad here and here's why. Yeah. And yeah. one guy looked like he was from the 1970s and he had a, he had a glass of beer and yes, you can smoke, drink, of do course. everything you do on earth. You, of course. You, yeah. you know, they're all there. Mm. Uh, you can go and get them. I don't know if they taste as good as the beers that we have, but yeah. I asked him, I, I said, well, why do you stay here? And he goes, well, listen, he said, I'm enjoying it. He said, I can still get my beer. I can still, yeah. um, you know, I don't try to get these people. Most, no. most of the ones I uh, retriever ones that come to me and I assume mm. that they've been referred to me maybe mm. I don't know there might be a third party referral system that I'm not yeah. familiar with yeah what is interesting is what you just mentioned uh, I had the people people who are quite happy with their lot there's and they die there's no reason for them to do anything else if they're happy and relax with it and I think that is one of the major reasons why uh, the next world is so similar to our world, because the majority of people are quite happy with a lot, except, of course, I, I met a homeless person um, on the other plane, and he died as a homeless person. And when I met him on the other plane, he was still homeless, but he had sort of, he, was a, he had a car now, which was like a van, and he lived in the van, okay, so he could drive around. Wow. But he, he, he felt really happy. It was almost to him, that was the next level of happiness to navigate from a, uh, from a sleeping bag on the floor to, to make it into a van, which he could drive around. And to him, that was the next level of heaven, okay? Right. So, so this is how how relative it is. So, when we talk about um, these incredible, beautiful sceneries, which people report when they go have a near death experience, um, uh, that is a sort of archetype of heaven, you know, which is very often illustrated as beautiful vistas, the right. streams, butterflies, and all this sort of stuff. But heaven is quite relative isn't it? So for some people, heaven may be a very, very modest affair. Yeah, well, I, let me uh, continue on with what you said, and then I want to maybe address that too, that I, I don't think it's so much that they're happy. I just think they don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. this is what they know how to do. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's sort of like here on Earth. People continue to go through their routines. Uh, they may not travel far from where they originally mm. were born, or if they do, when they move, they stay around there. Mm -hmm. They go to the restaurants around there. They don't travel the world. Maybe they don't have a lot of interests. Yeah. Uh, maybe they don't have a curiosity. Well, just because you cross over doesn't mean yeah. suddenly you, you're going to change or become a different person, no. at least for a while. Yeah. So as they inhabit these areas, I think they're given opportunities like mm. there are classes mm. uh, there. I mean, they're prompted just like we're prompted here to sort of escalate our 
our living conditions, our yeah. state of mind, or raise yeah. our consciousness, our frequency, or whatever, and we either latch on to that idea or we don't. But, yeah. you know, uh, so we call this how to have a le better life when you're dead. Yeah. Well, I think a way to have a better life when you're dead is to start thinking about what do I want my next level of existence to look yes. like and how can I have a better one? And mm -hmm. if you're not interested in anything, mm -hmm. that's not going to change. Yeah. So that I, should be enough to motivate people, I think. Yes. I always sort of think about Abraham Maslow when he, uh, the, the hierarchy of needs. Okay. Right. When people, yeah. when people have fulfilled their basic needs, another higher need sort of awakens in them. And they try to fulfill that need. The first need may be hunger, and the next need may be comfort or warmth and things. Until they get to a level where, have, where they have all these needs fulfilled, and then higher aspirations start filtering right. in. And then I think they acclimatize themselves to these higher aspirations. And being in a thought responsive world, they attract these to them much more right. easily than we do here on earth i mean we do that here on earth as well you know when we when we start off as a job which we don't like and gradually we think oh i want to be in charge and things you know <laughs> right and, and so we 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 uh become a more sort of uh, self-fulfilled you know and i find that is probably one of the driving motivators which gets people out of their out of their um, habits. And and I have come across people who were literally bored to death being dead, you know. I didn't... Oh, I think that's one of the motivators that yeah. gets people to, you know, yeah. leave that particular frequency, yes. boredom. Yeah, boredom, that's right. Yeah. And also, I was in the very beginning, when I started astral projecting, I was sort of stuck in this level and i i was desperate to get out of it you know and you mentioned another guy uh you wrote about he said um he came across electricity wires right Do you remember this he, yeah, he said, yeah yeah like uh, and and this is something I, which i also experience it's almost as if they're uh high high um voltage wires crisscrossing the level and i can't get through okay i don't right. i never found out what it was but it's obviously some kind of metaphor which we use for lack of a better sort of representation uh, not being able to go beyond our own energy you right. know so right. so the the metaphor he created which I, funnily enough, also chosen was an, a network crisscrossing high voltage wires, which kept me mm -hmm. trapped, you know, until I finally found a way uh, out of it. But the wires had then disappeared almost magically, and other things started happening, you know. So, well, until I met you, I really thought that the higher realms were not available to us in the physical, that um, like people that have near death experiences, uh, they, I think they, they talk about their experiences that they went to heaven and, um, yeah. but these are places. And I learned this at the Monroe Institute, we call them, landing areas uh mm -hmm. in at the monroe institute they called it focus 27 or the park yeah and these are almost like created to mm -hmm. provide a sort of comfortable idealized mm -hmm. version of reality so that when the person gets there they feel um you know more comfortable with their s surroundings and circumstances mm -hmm. and there are elements that are projections of things that would make them feel that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's, I think there are things like the, people talk about visiting a library there. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that are sort of static, uh, more consistent with what I found in Focus 27 or yeah. the landing area is that it's a place where you go to sort of stage mm -hmm. for 
where it is that you're ultimately going to end up, you know, and uh, some might go to higher frequencies or lower frequencies, but it's sort of like the metaphor that I like to use is like a radio station. Mm -hmm. So when you're listening to a radio, listening to the radio, you pick up on a particular station that you've turned the knob to. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another station right next to it. And occasionally it might bleed into it. For the most part, they're separated. Yeah. And that's sort of like our brain locks us into this reality yeah. where we cross over our frequency level, for lack of a better word. And it's not related to how good a person you are or no. what you know. Certainly not what you know. Mm. It, it, there's just an overall quality of your being. Yeah. That sort of locks you into a particular frequency, and that's what mm. you experience. Now, you can move out of that, and yeah. one of the ways is by just knowing what yeah. you and I are talking about, which is yeah. how to have a better life when you're dead. Yeah, yeah. That is a beautiful thing. I mean, for example, being an artist, I sort of, I'm trying to bring these images which I can see, you know, even if I don't have out-of-body experiences. I, it's almost like uh, I'm underwater and then have a periscope, okay? And the periscope perceives this incredibly beautiful terrestrial realm, okay? And I don't even have to be there. I can then go in my, let's say, call it a submarine, drive around the sort of sea level and see different landscapes. And they're all different, okay? They're all, uh, and they're all new. Then they're, they're not something I've seen before. And I always get surprised. So I don't imagine them. I, I can't possibly imagine them. I just visit them. And on rare occasions, I can, it becomes so real that I'm there, physically there. You know, and it can start off that I focus on um, on the on the foreground of the scenery first, right next to me uh, in my visual field, and then suddenly that becomes tangible. I step into it, okay, and then I'm on a much higher level, and I can then wander around in it. And of course, the one thing that happens is I become instantly filled with a completely new um, feeling tone, which uh, Robert Wagner used this word feeling tone. There is a certain feeling which is in, in harmony with the level I am on, and it's something completely new. Okay, it's like a new kind of emotion I feel. And that can be interwoven with happiness, with a certain amount of bliss, and also the feeling of feeling quite at home there. Something which I have forgotten about. Okay. And and that is beautiful. That can that can go on for for some time. And then I can go back into my normal consciousness and, and I can, I know it's still there. Okay, so so these these two worlds um, become increasingly interlocked, and and I know uh, I'm never really separated from them because I know they're just there, you know. Right. And and, and so and, and the other thing which I find really interesting is the quality of these worlds. You know, they've got a distinct quality, um, and I think. It's like uh, you have a certain thought or a certain feeling, and the feeling has to, to express a feeling in a, in a way, you can express a feeling in a type of landscape, okay? And the landscape can be, can be a, 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 for, a forest uh, or a swamp, which has got green light with it, and this has got a distinct feeling attached to it, and you recognize that the feeling and the color of the landscape, uh, the atmosphere, the mist drifting through is a perfect reflection of your feeling, you know. Whereas in, in normal life, the feeling is sort of quite abstract. We can't really easily describe it. But 
on the astral level, these feelings become these feelings become real, and they turn into an environment which you can actually explore then. And as you explore it, you explore your feeling. And I find right. it really interesting. Leaving the old life behind Giving the new one a try Making the past as we go Trying a new way to grow Finding a new for me. 